Well, hello there. I'm going to talk to you all in seasonal greetings. I am your host, Dr. Weiser Fripp. And I'm Frank Einstein. And welcome to the Fripp and Frank and Show Holiday Special. Did I do that one right, Master? Yeah, you did, my boy. So, um, as you know, tis the season to be jolly, as they say. Uh, for a lot of people, but for us horror fans, well, we all prefer the holiday of Halloween, don't we? But, you know, for the next Halloween to come, we have to go for Christmas and the whole year. But not to worry, me and Frankenstein are bringing Halloween to January in January. In Halloween in January 4, which will be coming New Year's Day. But, uh... Just bear with us till then. In fact, it's not that far away from the time this podcast is uploaded. So, Franken, my boy, Christmas time. I know, Buster, it's exciting, isn't it? So, uh, all I like about December is it's my birthday. Yes, it is, my boy. Three years old, aren't you? Yes. And also, Christmas time where everybody, you know, families and that come together and celebrate and enjoy Christmas like it's its last, because every Christmas is last Christmas, like they say in that Wham song. Well, I don't think that's what they're saying in the song, but I get what you mean by that reference, my boy. So, Christmas time. Um, so... When I was a young boy, at Christmas time, we would always be excited on Christmas Eve for Chris Kringle, uh, as we call him in Germany. In uh, other countries, people might think of him as Santa Claus, or Father Christmas, or, uh, you know, um, other days, Saint Nicholas. And, of course, every 6th of December is Saint Nicholas's Day. And, um, yeah... Those are what I know about Christmas. Uh, but me, to me, the true meaning of Christmas is giving to the needy and the poor. You know, uh, people that are in dire need. Charity, if you will. What is it to you, Franken? Well, I haven't been around so long as you have, Master. But all I know is it should be a magical time of year, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should. So... As this is a horror podcast, and it is a Christmas special, let's talk about the subject at hand. Oh, yes, Master. Krampus, the shadow of St. Nicholas. So, um, Master, I believe you have better knowledge of this Krampus than I do. Why don't you share yours? Ah, of course. So, Krampus. Well... What can I tell you? When I was a young boy, my grandfather would always say to me and my brother, be good, or Krampus will come and take you away. Uh, some naughty people would get lumps of coal, but uh, other people would, uh, you know, get like, uh, you know, other things. Like, like my grandfather, he said to me, Krampus is a demon, the shadow of St. Nicholas, and would give you at least a few warnings before he takes you away to hell in his sack. So the first night, if you're not good, he will leave his switch in your shoes, the switch being that broom-like thing, thing he smacks children with. Uh, on the second night, if you're still not good, he leaves scratches on you, and... If you are still not good by then, Krampus will take you away and take you to hell. That is what my grandfather told me, so I always had to try and be good. But of course, there was my evil twin who is evil. He never got taken by Krampus. So I remember one Christmas, I got him and I put a switch in his shoe. And then the second night, I scratched him just so he would try and be good. Did it work, Master? Oh, yeah, my boy, it's worked a treat. 
Yeah, but still, the legend of Krampus is celebrated in many countries like Germany, Austria, um, you know, in Scandinavian countries. They have a whole festival around this demon, Krampus. <laughs> and people, I uh, guess, did not get aware of it around the world until, um, until um, the 2015 Christmas horror film Krampus came out. I believe that is when everyone started to get better knowledge of him. Oh, yes, Master. Uh, that's where I first heard of him, because I never heard of him until you showed me that film. And he was a big horned man with horns and hooves and had a red coat on like Father Christmas did. He looks very creepy. Yeah, he does. So, what do you think of Krampus? Well, uh, but... I don't know, because I wasn't born a baby, was I? I was born as I, as you see me now. Um, but um, if you had to explain to me that this is all, like, part legendary and stuff, legends and that, I probably would have been very superstitious right now. But I'm not. Ah, yeah, because I taught you it. <laughs> yeah, so, Krampus. So, our listeners... If you don't know all about the legend of Krampus, uh, that is my knowledge of the character of the creature, and um, yeah, describes a horned being with hooves and horns and fur, a bit like the goat man and Satan. After all, he is the devil of Christmas. Um, yeah, Krampus. Evil demonic entity. Okay, so that is the first part of uh, this discussion of Krampus. Now, how about we go to the next uh, f uh, part of the show at hand? Frank, why don't you take it away? Oh, well, what I like to talk about that's Christmassy and horror related is Christmas horror films. So, I like Saw Gremlins. And that was very funny, but it, it, I can tell where the horror elements are in this. Um, you know, because it's like gremlins. There's like certain things you can't do to them. Yeah, yeah, like, what are they? Well, you can't get them wet because they multiply. You can't feed them after midnight because they'll go all hideous and ugly. And they will, and flashlights, they don't like it. Why do they break those rules in the film when they're specifically told not to do that? I don't know, boy. Maybe there would be no entertainment there. Hey, there was one funny part where Hulk Hogan broke the fourth wall and made a cameo in the film, in Gremlins 2. Yeah, and that had Christopher Lee in it as well. Yeah, it did. <laughs> the legendary Christopher Lee. And one Christmas horror film that I enjoyed when I was younger was a 1974 classic, Black Christmas. That was a very edgy film for its time. I mean, today, I think modern audiences would find it slow-burning and somewhat boring, but uh, back in the days, though, this was, like, really edgy horror, and what made it so much scarier is we didn't even see the killer in this film. We just saw the aftermath of what he did and and making those creepy phone calls down the phone uh that is what i loved about it it was so unsettling and when they saying the call is coming from in the house in the sorority house i thought wow that is creepy but another thing um they remade it in 2006 now the remake I don't like. Probably modern audiences might like it. I mean, it was made for a modern audience. But in that one, I feel like the killer sort of had too much of a backstory. The, all the mystery of the character of Billy, that's the killer in both the versions, the original and remake. In the remake, we, we kind of got um, too much of a backstory for the character and and stuff. And I I did not like that. I, I did not like that. Also, he had some genetic condition which made him yellow, like a Simpsons character. Oh, yes, Master, I remember that. That's what I said as well. He looks like something out of The Simpsons. Yeah, he does. 
Um, you know, also, there's two endings to this film. There's the, uh, like, I think the theatrical ending where he burns to death and his daughter's sister daughter is still alive. And then there is a DVD ending where he's still alive and gets impaled on a Christmas tree. I don't know, but all I know is that this remake, it's, it just was not for me. It's watchable. There's references and nods to some of the original material from the film, but for me, you know, I, I preferred the original. Probably because I grew up around, the, uh, I was a young adult around that time it came out in 1974. In nineteen in two thousand six, I was already in my sixties, you know, and I had seen better days in in horror. Uh, but yeah, that is what one uh, of my favorite horror Christmas films are, are you know, um, Black Christmas. Another one is Silent Night, Deadly Night. Now, when I saw this film, I thought, hmm. Taking the image of, Fa of Santa Claus, Father Christmas, or Kris Kringle, and making him a violent killer. I thought that was something quite original, something that I had not seen done. But wasn't it in a classic episode of the Avengers? No, not the Marvel Avengers. I'm on about the classic spy drama, the Avengers, from the 60s. Um, wasn't there a Christmas episode where a killer was dressed as Santa? Yeah, there was. But I think the the film that got people aware of that whole thing of a killer Santa was Silent Night, Deadly Night. Now, I thought that was a good film. Oh, it was, Master. But I don't think they should have made sequels. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of the sequels. I've seen the second one, but the third one, I, I couldn't even finish that one. I, I did not like it that much. Yeah, Master, it's uh, a bit daft when they drag it out uh, this is a slasher franchise that should have probably stayed as one or had at least just one sequel yeah it should have um anyway yeah what other christmas horror films are you into my boy well last year we saw that one didn't we santa's sleigh with goldberg that wrestler oh yeah that was a fun film i enjoyed that very much it was in the film. I, I'm sure we're not giving any spoilers away to our listeners because this film is 13 years old already. Uh, but, Joe, you know I've spoken enough. How about you talk about it to our listeners, Franken? Oh, OK, Master. So, um, basically what it is is Santa Claus is a bearded demon. Uh, I think Krampus. And he loses a bet to an angel and has to spread Christmas joy for a thousand years. But then, in the film, all bets are off, and he goes out on the rampage again. Only at the end, the angel comes back, and they place another bet on, and he loses. So he has to do it all again, spread Christmas joy for another thousand years. And I thought that was funny. Funny and original stuff. But still, not so original with the killer Santa vibe. Yeah, and also, didn't they remake the film Silent Night, Deadly Night as Silent Night? Yeah, they did with Malcolm McDowell. I thought that was okay, but I prefer the original. Uh, there's also another film that ripped off Silent Night, Deadly Night, Christmas Evil, which came out a, two, a few years after. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought that too. It was somewhat of a cheap rip-off of Silent Night, Deadly Night, I'm not sure if it has got a cult following or something, but I do know that it exists. Uh, and that. Uh, so, other films in the Christmas horror genre. Um, why don't you tell us, Franken? Oh, Jack Frost, I love that film. It's so funny. Where the killer is getting transferred to another prison and he crashes into that chemical waste and mixes his DNA with the snow and turns into a killer snowman. That's funny. Yeah, nicely put. But what I don't get, Master, is he melts, he can come back. You know, shouldn't he just melt and die like every snowman does? Yeah, I think so. But uh, he does have a weakness in the film. It is wholemeal. Yeah, wholemeal, what's with that? 
Well, it's like ready breakfast. They say ready breakfast is central heating for the body. Maybe if they took the thing literally there. And I'm sure I'm not giving stuff away about it, but, um, you know, this film's 20 years old. A lot, we get a lot of Christmas horror movies that have aged over the years. Some age well, some have not. Some have gained cult followings and some forgotten. I have to say, the most recent Christmas horror film that I can recall, to excuse me a moment, <coughs> <laughs> did your throat tickle you, master? Yeah, it did. Um, but yeah, Krampus, is, to me, is the most recent Christmas horror film I can think of. Because we haven't had another one since... Well, there's, like, The Conjuring 2. That takes place around Christmas time. But was released in the summer of 2015, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I think it was. And that is when the Enfield Poltergeist took place around Christmas time. Um, so yeah. Is there anything you want to say about Christmas horror films, my boy, Franken? Uh, I know, I think I said all I needed to say about them. What about you, Master? I think we said quite a lot of what we need to say. How about we go to our next topic in this, uh, in this podcast? The Christmas Carol. Oh yes, Master. That is one of my favourite Christmas stories, and I haven't even been around that long. So, um, Christmas cut, can I talk about this bit, Master? Go ahead. Um, so, Christmas Carol, that is actually a ghost story. It is, because it's got ghosts in it. You know, Ebenezer Scrooge is visited by free spirits. Well, four, if you count Jacob Marley. You know, and I find it a fascinating how original it must have been at the time. Because Charles Dickens, I think, changed the way we celebrate Christmas after the release of this book he wrote. I mean, he did it in very little time as well. You know, got it written and published from, like, in the October of, is it 1819? And got it published. I don't know. I saw it in that film, The Man Who Invented Christmas, I very enjoyed that film, and uh, it showed us how, like, a fictitious way of, you know, A Christmas Carol was done. Uh, now, one of my many favourite takes on this is the 2009 film with Jim Carrey. It's been retold so many times in that they even did a modern take on it with Ross Kemp, which is a British hard man, for you listeners, uh, a modern version where he's a lone shark and he's visited by spirits. And then there's the Muppet version. Oh, how I do love the Muppets version of the film. <laughs> yeah, Michael Caine is Scrooge. So, uh, yeah, he gets visited by free spirits. Jacob Marley warns him that if he doesn't change his ways, he will get stuck in chains for all eternity. And, and that's that. And those free spirits change his ways. One shows in the past... One shows in the present and one shows in the future. Now, present, now the past ghost is always described as a white spirit with a, a candle thing. Isn't that right, Master? Yeah, it is. And it's had so many different reimaginings, that spirit. But one spirit that has always somewhat looked the same for art is present and yet to come. The spirit of Christmas present was like a depiction of St. Nicholas in a green robe and Olympic torch. You know how it is. I, you should know what I mean. If I'm sure every one of our listeners here has at least seen a take on a Christmas carol. And then the first spirit represents is the Grim Reaper, what I like to think of as. So, to me, um, the, the next... Uh, to me, the three spirits. Now, I think of this, right? The three real spirits of Christmas, past, present, and year to come. The real spirit of Christmas past is, I like to think of as the Virgin Mary, because she was there when Jesus Christ was born. So I feel that she represents Christmas past, you know. And for the present, St. Nicholas, because he is a very important Christmas icon, and I choose to believe in, in Santa Claus that way. 
I believe that he is a spirit, a, a force that goes around every Christmas Eve spreading joy and giving good feelings to people. That is what I like to think of as. Uh, you know, that's how I choose to believe Santa Claus today, uh, as a grown man. Um, and then the third spirit, the Grim Reaper, because, you know, the Grim Reaper represents everything that is inevitable, like death. Do you think I'm going to die, Buster? I don't know. But let's not worry about about death, shall we? Because death is not... It's quite morbid, but... I know we bring it upon so many people, but they're all bad people and that. Let's not discuss our private matters now. You're bringing them up, Master. I know. Uh, okay, so back to the matter at hand. Christmas Carol, to me, I love the f story, and my favourite version is the... 1951 film Scrooge with starring Alice de Sim. Uh, they did a black and white version of this, then they colorized it in the 2000s for a re-release. I like the colored version, but I also like prefer it in black and white. Oh yeah, I remember that one, Master. You showed it to me every like for the last year, every year since I was born. You've been showing it me. I like that too. Um. Wasn't there other versions, like a musical version in the 70s? Yeah, called uh, Scrooge the Musical. Then they did a made-for-TV version with Kelsey Grammer, uh, a Christmas Carol the Musical. They did a Mickey Mouse version too. I thought that was funny, but it was very short as well. I felt It felt kind of rushed, if you ask me. Yeah, it did. But this has inspired many other... Uh, things. The story of A Christmas Carol has inspired so many other shows and that to take, you know, like, uh, like for example, Blackadder. You know, Blackadder Christmas Carol. Only in that one, it's the other way around. Oh yeah, Master. He's all charitable and giving, and then he sees his past and then his future, and in his future he finds that his descendants are all slaves because they take advantage of him because he's so nice and generous. And then he turns all grumpy and moody. I thought that was funny, Master. Yeah, I did too. Now they took that Scrooge kind of character and reversed it. Yeah, that was funny. And then it, uh, in 2010, the Doctor Who special Christmas Carol. Uh, I liked how they sort of twisted that one around a bit. How they used the power of time travel in Doctor Who. Oh yeah, Master, I like that one too. Very nicely done. Probably the only one, well, one of very few Christmas episodes to take place in the far future in a human colony. But isn't that science fiction? Is a black eyed a comedy? Yeah, it is. So, um, let's go off the topic of horror for one moment and talk about Christmas still. What Christmas films do you like in general? Oh, I like quite a lot, like Home Alone 1 and 2. They're the best ones, Home Alone 1 and 2. Home Alone 3 is okay, but then after that they should have stopped it. I also like Elf. That's a funny film, Master, that you showed me. Yeah, it is. Very funny. I like others like uh, It's a Wonderful Life, Scrooge, and a lot of classic ones that I like. I love It's a Wonderful Life, that film. That has a supernaturalness to it as well, you know, where, where I make out a sees what it's like if he was never born and he, he sees that it's a wonderful life you know master every time a bell rings an angel gets its wings i know uh, yeah i like that film okay back to christmas and horror so what other christmas horror films can you think of off the top of your head well there's that christmas short in the anthology horror film holidays oh yeah the film holidays uh, for our listeners, I'm sure you've heard and, or at least seen this film. Holidays is an anthology film where they have short f films featured in there with horror. Like, first one, it's Valentine's. Second one, it's St. Patrick's Day. Um, the third one is Easter. The fourth one, Mother's... Oh, wait, no, it's in Mother's Day before Chris Easter one. We have Father's Day in there, and we have Halloween, and Christmas, and then New Year. 
Uh, yeah, those are the ones. Um, I also saw one called The Elf. Uh, not the 2003 comedy, it's a B movie. This is just awfully good, I would say. Or probably awful. Yeah, Master, they make so many wonderfully shit Christmassy horror films too, like Krampus the Christmas Devil. Yeah. You know, I feel like in the last three to four years alone, because of the film Krampus, I know we've talked about this already in our podcast, but it is so interesting. It has actually gained the popularity of the character, of the legend and mythos of Krampus. So, um, that is what I feel like it has done, you know, horror-wise and stuff. Uh, is there anything else we have to say now, Master? I don't know. Is there? I can't think of much more to say. I think we should probably consider wrapping this up right now. Yeah, Master. I think I've said enough already. Yeah, okay, well. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this, uh, for this holiday special of our podcast. I want to thank our listeners for listening. And also, I want to also thank our listeners for every month that we feature in the podcast it it means so much to us that you take the time out of your day to listen to our show when it's just us two talking you know so i'm very grateful for that and i hope that the same thing will carry on in 2019 when the show returns of course the show will return in february are we going to do, like, some kind of wintry thing or something? Maybe Valentine or something? I don't know. It depends when Random Horror will allow us to do our podcast. Uh, but, yeah, we shall definitely back, be back in February. We're not going to do a episode in January because... You want to tell them, my boy? I thought we told them already at the beginning. Well, just tell them again to remind them. Oh, me and my master will be back... A new year for Halloween, January 4. For a full 31 days, my master and I will take over the Random Horror YouTube channel and review horror films. We'll review... My master will be reviewing weekdays and I'll be reviewing weekends. All horror films throughout the month of January to get rid of those Christmas, post-Christmas winter blues. Did I do that right, Master? Yeah, you did. So, we will see you in the fourth season of Halloween in January 4. I want to thank you all for listening. And, yeah, this has been a great uh, episode, I think. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. i like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, or if you're a horror lover, a very Merry Christmas, and a very Happy New Year from me, Dr. Weiser Flip and Oh and Frank Edstein. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. So yeah, that is it. Have a good Christmas and we will see you soon. Alfie so until then I bid you all Halfida say goodbye. Yeah, bye bye. Wow, that was great, Master. I know.